Hi, my name is Tom Shawcroft, I'm a DOP, and I'll be speaking you through these lens tests. So the first lens uh, we actually shot on 8K on the Red Raptor uh, in VV mode on the 25mm Distagon. Um, this was just to try and show off um, and see if it actually covered the full sensor. Uh, as you can see, the uh, it doesn't actually cover the sensor. I put around a white box of what would be a usable frame, um, and you can see the uh, image circle is actually like, projecting um, not off the sensor, but actually on the sensor. So you actually just get the edges of the uh, kind of vignetting. Of so we changed the camera to um, Super 35 millimeter mode. Um, and so this is shooting at 6K. Um, I wanted to show off also, um, one, we can get a color chart there and we'll probably get a freeze frame, um, but also how close the lens could get in terms of macro wise. Um, without needing any diopters at all. So um, this is ridiculously close, like for a 25 millimeter lens, it's incredible. As we pull back to myself, um, and it's fairly sharp on the color chart there, and sharp on myself there. Um, <laughs> lovely smile, great. Uh, minimal highlight flaring, just going to the back of uh, outside the um, building, and then back to the character as well. Uh, I just wanted to see what the uh, focus pulling was actually like on the lens and, and if it was breathing or much. Um, what we did find out, and this is just a heads up for our, all of these lenses, um, is that the glass sitting in the lens um, wasn't actually housed properly. Um, therefore, there was like, you'll see that there's just there and there's like a little jiggle of the lens. Um, that's because the glass needs to be reset inside the lens um, for the correct tracking of the lens. Otherwise, any time you touch this lens, um, there'll be a jiggle at the start and the end of the focus pull. This is stopping all the way down. I think I'm just testing out the blades. Um, and this is me just working on the uh, seeing what flares are actually coming through on the lens and how flare is the coating. Obviously, I'm using something very inadequate as an iPhone is ridiculous. Um, but, you know, it still showed where the flaring is and what the actual shutters look like. Here's a 35mm uh, Distagon at T28. Um, this is focused on myself. Uh, there's a little back kicker on me and a front light on the left hand side with a sky panel. Uh, again, just focus pulling to the foreground, seeing what that rack is like. Uh, you can see the close focus there on the fingers. Um, nice right neck. It's lovely. And then a lovely pullback into myself. You can start seeing the edges of the blades, and actually, this lens is quite unique in that um, the iris kind of opened up and lipped out a little bit, so it has a, like a little bit of a flick um, on the kind of the actual uh, angle of the bokeh of the iris, as if you could see that out of focus moments there. Again, just looking at the um, Kind of infinity focus on that brick wall. See the contrast of the lens. Um, still, still, if it st holds up, and you can see those um, six-sided blades might come up in the uh, in this test. Yeah, you can just see it faint on the right-hand side. Um, the aperture blades projecting through. There is something quite nice about this lens, it's 35 millimeter. Um, I quite like how the skin tone rendition is, just generally on the camera as well, but also like it's it's picking up really nice kind of elements of quite a lot of detail in my skin tone. Um, it's quite great. So this is a 50 millimeter here at T 1.4, it's a Distagon. It's probably a little bit overexposed currently as an image, um, but that's because I really want to open up. Uh, we didn't have any filters on the day, um, but also in post wise, I don't really want to take this image down because I want to see what it's like out of the camera. Um, so perhaps I should have exposed it down a bit or put an ND in, fr in front of it. So that is the close focus there of this lens. Pretty close. I just wanted to hold in a foreground element, so that's why Nick's holding his hand in front of the lens. And just to kind of see the uh, effect of... There's only fringing as well on those kind of objects. It, there's a little bit of chromatic fringing in some place on these lenses, but it's very subtle. 
Um, as you can see there, it's pretty pinners on my eyes. And that's going back outside there. And we'll probably, yep, we've got the brick detail there. You can see the bricks pretty well. It's just adjusting to focus down or stop down for the bricks. Great. And then back to me again. Okay. I really wanted to find out um, what the close focus on eyes on this lens is going to be like. So this is a 50 mil. You can see the that is close focus as you like. Um, it's really great detail on those eyes. You can start seeing like the uh, elements within my eye as well, and the uh, different sections of color. And then also, it's quite nice and soft to be fair in terms of like. I wouldn't want to put my actors in this position too much, depending on their face shapes, but I think it's quite an interesting uh, kind of close feel. Maybe if you stop down a little bit as well, that might help. Um, and now this is testing out the lens flares. Um, again, just, I mean, I kind of felt like I was at a uh, doctor's surgery uh, with this lens uh, and with this look. It's quite dreamy effect, to be honest. I have no clue what I'm talking about here, but um, okay. as, as soon as you stop down that lens, it's, it turns a bit grittier, especially with the lighting we had, it kind of, the actual flaring looks good as well, but the haliation of the lens as well, and then also on that left hand side, um, where the, it's kind of kicking off the actual coating of the lens, and the, how the coating of the lens flares as well, it's not too bad, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty clean uh, as a lens. This is an 85mm T1.4 Vistagon. I think I'm saying probably the same thing. <laughs> Who knows? The close focus on this lens wasn't that far away from where I was actually sitting, to be fair. I think it was another two or three centimeters in front of my face. So it's racking from outside to back inside. I mean, aesthetically, it looks how it looks on the day. Uh, if that makes sense in terms of lens-wise, it, it captures a nice image. Um, whether it's the right image for you is completely different, like, you know. But, um, I think also there's some character to this lens as well because of the age. Um, there is a forgiving nature to this. I'm not a massive fan of the flares there on the right hand side. Um, but in terms of image rendition, it does a pretty good job. Um, it gives you a little bit of a dreamy effect on this um, 85mm. And there we go with a torch there. Unfortunately, it's actually a different torch that I used originally, so um, this is a different phone, I think. Um, but it does give you a lot better flaring. Um, I'm coming, trying to get into the super close focus here. There we go. We just panned away from that window there because it wasn't really giving me what I wanted in terms of, oh wow, that's really beautiful, that, that little element there was really interesting. Um, just kind of reminds me of um, Diving Bell and Butterfly um, in terms of like the, the look, in terms of the, both the torch itself, um, but also like the, um, the overall look of the lens and the way the lens falls off as well. This is wide open, trying to flare the lens and see what happens. Pretty crazy stuff. It gives it a kind of like a very dreamy medical drama at the moment, um, which is quite beautiful. Um, there we go. Maybe it's like the doctor is running down the corridor with the patient. But this is what I mean. Like this is what lens tests for me are about. Is seeing like, okay, how can this, how can this be used? Is this the right lens to be used? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a very interesting look.
This is a 100mm T28 Distagon. Now we're really right in the kind of spaghetti western style. I'm just trying to get the color chart on there just to fill the frame. It looks pretty good um, for what it is um, for how we lit it. It was very quick this whole test. I think we're in now uh, in less than an hour, hour and 20 maybe. Um, they were great at CVP, just uh, setting up everything and then we brought in the lenses and to test them with the Red Raptor and did a little bit of adjusting, but yeah. So you can see there that edge definitely looked like some kind of chromatic operation going on. Not much, but just a little bit. Feels like there's some kind of separation there on the thumb. So just foreground splitting off and just seeing how that kind of, you know, over the shoulder or very tight over the shoulder, how that's how that would work as a situation. And here's Nick. Um, he was really great help, help in the day. I think personally it's a really interesting set of lenses um, and they're really unique. So anybody that is out there that's collecting distagons, like whether you are just uh, converting them with uh, a mount on the back of them to various other different mounts, um, that's a really, really great way of starting off your set. Um, or whether you are buying a whole set of rehoused distagons, um, then then great. I think if this is the look you want uh, for your everyday kind of work, it's it's a really lovely look and it gives you versatility of this kind of dreamy look where it's towards the wide open kind of area on some of the lenses. But also you can start stopping down a bit and and still um, give your kind of images the not real world, truly real world kind of um look because obviously the lenses will affect the uh generic look of the world um but something where it looks fairly um you know that you could put it in front of a client of a corporate um or a, an everyday kind of um job where they do stand up really well well that's the end of the lens test we only had five lenses and um it went pretty quickly um i hope you enjoyed that and um i'm hoping to do some more lens tests soon um, I just really enjoy uh, testing lenses and finding out what elements really work for a certain story and, and then obviously um, working with directors to try and tell those stories. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.